Innovation Coordinator at the Canadian Light Source. Uh, today I'm interviewing Mel and I'll get Mel to talk a little bit about himself and how he came to know the CLS. Hi, my name is uh, Mel Sizing. I'm a grade 8 teacher in the Greater Saskatchewan Catholic School System in a program called Equal Justice. Um, it was my master's project uh, and then I'm also a PhD student in education here at the University of Saskatchewan and uh, currently uh, collaborating with the CLS and my program is called Eco Justice and it's basically connecting to land and place and experiential learning and I know that the tree program at the CLS um, at CLS was a uh, a great fit. It just a lot of the themes aligned really well, and that's how we first initiated the the collaboration together. And then from there, it's just it's just constantly growing. Yeah, uh, can you tell me a little bit more about kind of what that collaboration looked like? Like what uh, happened with Chi? What did you do with your students? Yeah, so with our students, we used a holistic uh, model uh, to gather their evidence and guide their learning uh, kind of through the framework of reconciliation. So we're hoping to, how do you reconcile with the land? How do you begin to decolonize that process and ask that big question, what does land mean to Canadians? You know, for some it's uh, the history of it is really important. So that's where we started. And what I liked about the tree project, it was about stories, you know, the stories of the tree rings of what was happening environmentally, uh, but also at the same time, there's so many other connections to the social context that we wanted to really um, get into and investigate what was happening during those times. And we used two locations for our project. It was uh, Waskasu National Park and Waterton National Parks. We wanted to look at what was going on with national parks and with that whole history in Canada, how the first one started. And then we asked questions about how that affected land, people, and then from past to current day and then for the future. So it's all about storytelling. That's the whole project, storytelling and, and reconciliation and, and action moving forward. Awesome. Um, in the video that you shared with us, um, so that's what the students are at what location again? Oh, the two locations. Actually, we had three locations. We want to do a, a local one. So we did just within Saskatoon at Ferdale. And then we went to... Uh, within the province and national parks, so that was Waskasu and then water to, to kind of compare the different samples. And what was the experience like for the students? Um, it was Waterton that you were showing in the video? What yeah, was uh, that video was a combination of both Waskasu and, and Waterton. So I think for the students just getting engaged with the place and kind of getting excited about first and foremost the environment, um, but then also how that tree project was a part, an element of why they were going out there, but then also connecting to um, the people, the stories of the people, the indigenous people there, um, what has happened with colonization, and then connecting uh, with those communities to have bigger discussions, and then at the same time doing, you know, the project. So it was kind of neat to tie everything all together. And for the students, um, I think it just gave them that. It didn't feel like just one really rigid and formatted science class it became you know here we'll be in this one place for the entire day and there's so many cross-curricular connections that are available that often you know it's it's tough in a regular school setting I know high school will be more challenging but elementary school we're with our students the entire day um, we can reframe our day to be able to fit these big concepts and these big themes yeah, that's it. and you can really see that when you watch the video, just to hear the students' voices and the impact that it had. Um, in terms of for yourself as a teacher, what kind of impact did that experience or those like collaborations? What what kind of impact does that have on you? Um, for me, I think it'd be looking at generations of students and seeing uh, if given a different opportunity to look at education and the way that it's been presented to them, um, could it be transformative in the practices moving to the future? So asking those really deep, hard, critical questions. I know that's a program at the CLS, I forgot the name of it, where you ask those big ethical questions. Oh, uh, the science and society of yeah, the so Lizzie, yep. Yeah. Asking big questions like that, and then also being able to do something about it, because often where I think students lose their 
their voice and their power is uh, when they don't get to see it executed. So the nice thing about doing experiential learning is they know that a lot of their work and research is going to go towards something and it's not just necessarily assessment or marks. It mm -hmm. has a bigger purpose above and beyond numbers and, and letter grades. So that's what we try to do. Um, I, I'd hope it'd be more impactful for the students, like moving forward. Um, we're kind of just at an interruption being in a grade eight and we hope, you know, that it kind of carries with them throughout uh, high school and post-secondary. If, if they choose to, like if they choose to go post-secondary. Yeah. Um, I guess one of the last questions I want to ask is just kind of what kind of advice do you want to give to teachers who are trying to, you know, take on this approach, give a practical approach, but also thinking about reconciliation and cross-curricular connections and all the other stuff we have to think about with teaching. Um, what kind of advice do you want to give teachers? Um, I always tell my students, like, curricular outcomes are really easy to attain once you have passion and purpose behind some of the projects or investigations that you do. So when you embody the whole classroom and take that risk of listening to what the students want to learn about, some current things, because basically how we frame our year and our program is uh, we do so a few foundational units. And then after that, we allow the students to kind of guide us in the content and the themes. And we just provide resources and a bit you know, access to experts and that sort of thing to allow that process to happen because then they feel truly engaged in what they're learning because they, they get to steer it a little bit more um, than a regular classroom that's prescribed. So just don't be afraid of taking that risk and have passion towards it because uh, those curriculum outcomes um, are really easy to attain after. Um, in terms of reconciliation, it becomes a bit more authentic uh, because it becomes so relational because you're, you're thinking about this theme for a really long period of time and it's just not a, a 50 minute you know part of your day and then you're kind of disconnected and going on to math and or to another subject that aren't kind of intertwined together so we always try to intertwine all the subject areas um and it can be challenging at first um but uh it can be done if, if there's any advice for the for those teachers, uh, you know, uh, CLS is a good place to connect to, but also some of the programming, like uh, for us having that science and society along with this question really tied well for purpose, uh, being like a equal justice classroom. So that sense of justice and equity is always one of the <clears throat> kind of the foundational critical thinking pieces for the program too. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you so much for uh, giving me the chance to interview. I always learn so much from you, so I could hear you all day <laughs> or listen to you all day, I guess. Um, so yeah, so thank you. And uh, definitely um, check out the video uh, for Mel's um, Eco Justice class on their take of their trip to getting tree samples and just hearing the students' voices of, of their interpretation of the experience. And um, yeah. <laughs> awesome.